So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at a fountain pen called the Lamy Scala. Sort of a mid-range fountain pen from Lamy. Sells for about $100 with a steel nib and $200 with a gold nib, though you don't really see the gold nib one that often. The pen is sort of a higher-end version of Lamy's popular Studio, which is a, a pen you see all the time. It's a really good deal. It's nicely made, a little bit lacking in character. Uh, but the Scala is much less popular and shares a lot of the same properties, but it has some upgraded components. It's sort of a refined Lamy, I would say, maybe uh, a little bit more designy, heavier, larger, nicer in some ways, uh, but it has a few uh, quirks that I think have kind of prevented it from being a really popular pen. It's also at a little bit of a weird price point, which we'll get into later on. So here's the Scala in the fountain pen in matte black. It's sort of a soft touch black. It kind of feels like a, a Lenovo ThinkPad or an IBM ThinkPad, depending on how old yours is. It's sort of grippy, sort of rubbery, but it is all metal. Uh, it's called a soft touch material. Again, all metal. I believe it's steel. It's hard to tell. Uh, I'm not really sure on that. Lamy says something about steel on their website, but then who knows? It, uh, yeah, I get fully metal body, chromed tip, chromed clip, chromed back. It's also sold in some special editions and a rose gold and a few other ones, but this is sort of the standard one. And uh, it's a really, I'd say it's a pretty good looking pen. It's, it's kind of like square-ish, uh, but it's really clean, has that sort of Lamy Bauhaus type design aesthetic that they're known for. What the Scala has is that it's just really impeccably built. The sort of tolerances are really nice. The cap goes on and off in just a really incredible click. You could just hear it. Just really clean, really firm, has nice lines, kind of big angles here. I think it's a pretty good looking pen in a sort of refined and possibly slightly boring way. The clip is metal, it's quite heavy. It is uh, sprung like many of Lamy's clips. Mine doesn't push up when I push it here. I don't know if that is a fault with mine. I bought this one used, uh, but it does come up, which is nice. All chrome here, looks really nice, really clean. The chrome is really nicely applied. Lamy does this stuff really well and they really upped their game with the Scala, with it being sort of a higher end pen. The only branding on the pen is right here. It says Lamy, and then here it says Germany, which is pretty standard. It's Lamy here, Germany here, and that's pretty much it. Lamy isn't really big on putting logos or anything like that on their pen. Really clean. The back is pretty basic, just that stainless steel or chromed cap, whatever it is. It is a snap-on clip, not a screw-on, which I know some people will be disappointed with given it's about a $100 pen. I think right now it's officially 85 euros, so maybe like $93, something like that, and the gold nib version will be like 200, but still, a uh, the only thing different is the, is the nib. This is nib, like all Lummies, nibs just pulls right off. The body itself, also the soft touch material, holds up really nicely but uh, it does pick up, it doesn't pick up dust, but it'll pick up grease spots. So if your hands are a little bit oily or you're eating while using your pen or something like that, it will definitely show, but dust and other things will not show. The section is really nicely sized. Uh, I'll get the measurements on, on sharpen.com. You can check it out there. I didn't measure it yet. Uh, it is chromed. So I know some people hate metal sections. If that's the case, it's just not a pen for you. Just avoid it. The chromed has, I think it's like, it has a grippiness to it. I don't find it to be slippery where the soft touch material is slippery. Chrome generally has pretty good grip. Uh, I tend to like this section. It's really long. The section is over an inch long, which is great, about almost an inch and a half. So it's really nice to see if you want to spread out a little bit. And it's a good size, not too big, not too small. It's really similar to the Studio, which I know a lot of people out there have used unscrews really nicely. Again, the tolerances on this pen are really fantastic. Lamy does such a great job building their pens. 
use that standard Lamy cartridge. This is the T10, so just a normal Lamy cartridge they've been using on basically every pen forever. And you can see some really nice touches in here. You can see this, uh, the threading is really big and it looks like it's been almost machined out of this piece. It's just really well done. This is like a pen that Lamy put a lot of pride into. Not that they didn't on the studio, but it's clear there are some touches like this, some touches like that cap where Lamy upped the game and they bumped it up from being a, you know, like a $60 pen or whatever the studio is, a $50 pen up to a $100 pen. So it's a big price difference, you know, in a relative sense. So there are some changes that justify that. The pen is also a lot heavier. You can just feel in the barrel that it's just a heavier barrel than the other pens. And there's clearly a brass insert here. So the uh, threading is really nice. There's some, I can really, can't really see it, but there's definitely another piece in there, some, some brass in there to give it some heft. This is all metal, no plastic at all in this pen, which is really nice to see. And again, just all chromed, really nicely done, and has really been holding up well. Lamy cartridges are nice, it's, you know, about a milliliter, so a good size. And uh, I think the rings are quite standard, uh, quite, quite solid. This screws down. I haven't had this unscrew at all, which is really nice, or sorry, un, un, uh, like loosen at all. It won't unscrew itself at all. I can't unscrew it, obviously. If you want to post it, you can, has a really nice, clean posting action. No click or anything, obviously, but just goes on. It goes on quite firm. Posted, it's a very large pen. I don't think too many people are doing this. It's very back heavy. Uh, I have trouble using it posted, but you can. And then again, the click action is really nice. The nib is the standard Lamy nib in steel. It, it's not any special additions or anything like that. I know some of them have a slightly rounded if you get like the Z53 or whatever it is, but this is just the standard nib. I bought it in the extra fine. On background, I know uh, I said before I bought the pen used. I did, I bought it used. The uh, Lamy Scala is a little bit hard of a pen to identify. So if you could see it online, uh, you could usually get a pretty good deal on it used. It doesn't have like a really great resale market and they, Lamy produces a lot of these and a lot of different varieties. So if you like search online for like a Lamy pen, sometimes you'll find uh, a Scala just kind of sitting around and you can get a pretty good deal. I haven't seen really any of the gold nib versions go. So uh, it's almost always steel, but that's fine. I really like the Lamy steel nibs. I've done many, many videos on them. On a comparison front, I wish I had all my pens handy, but unfortunately I don't right now. It, it is a larger pen from a size standpoint. This is capped. It is one, two, three, four, five and a half inches. So pretty long. And you can see a good deal larger than this uh, sign pen, this Pentel sign pen. And then uh, obviously from a width standpoint, it's a good size pen. It, it completely dwarfs the Bic or like a sort of a standard gel pen. It, it's like, it's a sizable pen. It's not gigantic, like an emperor pen or something like that but it is definitely a sizable pen and uh, it has a little bit more size and weight to it than the Studio and uh, more than most of Lamy pens. It's definitely way bigger than a CP1 or uh, you know some of those pens like that. So I have the extra fine nib on it, but so I'll do a quick writing sample. It's a really nice writer. Lamy steel nibs are just great. Uh, they're not, you know, you have to decide what size is best for you, but I find them all to be quite good even as a lefty. So this is the, this is the extra fine. Extra fine is really good for day to day. I tend to go with the fine, just with a little bit uh, more width to it and a little bit more, well, a little bit extra ink obviously, but the extra fine is really nice. Not too much feedback, kind of errors more, tied, more uh, towards the side of smoothness than it does feedback, but it's a nice rider. You can see it just, goes and goes. This is Lamy's kind of standard purple ink, which uh, I don't buy very often, but it's a nice change of pace. It's pretty, pretty legible. I wish it was a little bit darker, but it's fine. But anyway, this is the 
Scala with the extra fine nib. You can swap the nibs if you want. Obviously, you just pull this one off and you put the next one back on. The nibs cost about $14 each. And once you have a few, you can just swap them from pen to pen. You don't have to buy, you know, a bunch for every pen. The pen is nicely balanced, really well weighted. Uh, I, it's like very neutrally weighted. I just find it to be a comfortable pen to write with. It's one of the pens that as you have it in your hand, it just sort of, I would say you can kind of start to forget about it just because the chrome is maybe a little bit slippery for me, but really not bad. The soft touch is fine, but it has a nice heft to it. And uh, you don't really have to think too much about this pen. Yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those pens where you have it and uh, it just writes, it does its job and you never have to shake it. It always starts when I want to write with it. It's just quite reliable. So I know the pen has, you know, it's, it could be a little bit dull on the outside, but once it's in your hand, I think it's a really nice pen. And this is probably one of Lamy's underrated pens just because it's, again, it's kind of in the middle of their price range uh, or in the upper end of the price range with the gold nib, which is not necessary. And then uh, the design is really, uh, again, not really for everyone, I would say. Again, it's that kind of Bauhaus, which you can get for a lot cheaper with some of Lamy's more distinctive pens like that CP1 we talked about before. Anyway, that's a Lamy Scala. Really nice pen. I would recommend buying one used. There's really no reason to buy full price for this, even though that 85 euro price tag is, is uh, pretty reasonable. Thanks for watching.